Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another Brawl deck, and since today's FNM event is Historic Brawl, I'll be recording a Historic Brawl video, although by the time you watch this the event might already have ended. And for our commander we're playing Ugin the Ineffable, 6 mana for a 4 loyalty planeswalker that makes our colorless spells too cheaper, can plus 1 to make a 2-2 two -two token that when it dies puts a card into our hand, and the minus 3 can destroy target permanent that's 1 or more colors, so it gives us access to a nice bit of removal as well. Now the cool thing about these colorless Brawl decks is that you can easily swap out your commander if you get bored of him. In this case we could also play with Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, maybe Traxos or Karn. So we've got a lot of different options, so you can easily swap out your commander without having to change anything else in the deck. And then at 1 mana we've got a Bag of Holding for a bit of card selection, Stone Cold Serpent gives us a nice mana sink and we can play it at any spot in our curve. At 2 mana we've got Maze Mind Tome for more card draw and card selection, Mindstone for ramp, Ratchet Bomb as removal, especially nice against tokens. Treasure Map can also help us ramp and give us more card selection. And Voltaic Servant has a ton of synergy in this deck with plenty of artifacts we don't mind untapping. Then at 3 mana we'll see a ton of ramp, since we just want to ramp into 6 mana as soon as possible. So going over some of the ramp cards, we've got Unstable Obelisk, which can also be sacrificed to destroy target permanent. Spinning Wheel can tap a creature down. Skyclave Relic can also make copies of itself if we kick it. We've got a Mirror, which is a creature, but it adds 2 mana. Oraskar Relic can also be sacrificed if we achieve the City's Blessing. Mana Lith makes 1 mana of each color. Mana Geode is just an upgraded Mana Lith that also lets us scry 1 when we play it. We've got the Chalice, which drains the opponent for 1. Chromatic Lantern making 1 mana of any color and also turning our lands into 5 color lands. And Altar of the Pantheon also makes 1 mana of any color and increases our devotion. So plenty of 3 mana ramp cards. Some of these abilities are more useful than others, but we just want to play as many of these artifacts as we can get. And then we also have Transmogrifying Wand as more removal that can turn creatures into 2-4 tokens. Then at 4 mana we've got Traxos, a 7-7 Trampler that we can easily untap by playing a Historic spell, which includes artifacts. We've got Mystic Forge as a nice card draw engine. Myriad Construct, a nice 4 mana 4-4 four four that we can kick in the late game. We've got Karn, providing a Karn advantage and making Karnstruct tokens. We've got Jorah's Familiar, giving our artifacts discounts as well. And then we've got Hedron Archive, a nice one from Jumpstart, which can ramp for 2. And Firemind Vessel also ramps for 2, but enters a battlefield tapped. Then at 5 mana we've got Lotus for more ramp, Forsaken Monument, also an amazing addition from Zendikar Rising, giving our colorless creatures plus 2 plus 2, whenever we cast a colorless spell we gain 2 life, and essentially doubles our mana production. And at our top end we've got the Dreamstone for more ramp and card draw, Godfarer Statue can tax the opponent and slowly drain him to death. Immortal Sun, even though it clashes a bit with our commander, still a nice card draw engine that shuts down opposing planeswalkers as well and makes our spells one cheaper. Meteor Golem can destroy target and non-land permanent when it enters battlefield. And then we've got Ugin the Spirit Dragon as a nice one-sided sweeper and Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger a nice win condition as well. And then quickly going over our mana base, we've got one basic island, you get to choose one basic land type to add to your deck, so you only get to play islands, so now I can't add a planes to the deck for instance. And then we've got Animal Sanctuary, Arch of Araska, Blast Zone, Ponder's Enclave, Buried Ruin, Cascading Cataracts, Crawling Barrens, Cryptic Caves, Detection Tower, we've got Emergence Zone, Field of Ruin, Field of the Dead, especially nice in this deck. Then we've got Ghost Corridor, Interplanar Beacon, Karn's Bastion, We've got Labyrinth of Skofos, Mobilized District, Radiant Fountain, Reliquary Tower, Scavenger Ground, Sunscorch Desert, Throne of Makindi, Unclaimed Territory, Unknown Shores, and Zalfern Void. Of course, some of these lands are more useful than others, but we just want to play as many as we can get to synergize with our Forsaken Monument, and also makes our Feel of the Dead a little bit better. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see what the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Muldrotha, the Gravetide. And yeah, our hand's okay, we've got a bit of ramp with Spinning Wheel and Manolith. Usually want at least two ramp cards to make a hand keepable. Guess I'll use the Scry, don't need more lands. And then we're looking for a big finisher. Sadly, we can't play Arcane Signet ourselves, but Mindstone is basically the equivalent. So could just play Traxos next turn. Ok, 
can maybe play my treasure map for free if I get Ugin in play first. And then I'll attack. And untap Troxos again. Next turn we can play Ugin, can also activate Crawling Barons, got a few options. Alright, I'm not opposed to the idea of using Ugin to blow up the Guardian project, which can provide a lot of card advantage otherwise. Let's cry, don't need more lands. And then... Yeah, I might want to save Mirror to untap Traxos, but we're pretty likely to find more spells here since I can scry with a map on upkeep. So let's just blow up Guardian Project. I can create and now we've got a ton of mana that we can sink into maybe Crawling Barons or Mobilized District. Got plenty of creature lands here. Could have also opted to deal with Elves, either with Ugin or with Blast Zone, since my opponent's pretty behind on mana. It's gonna be Lotus Cobra into Journey. Not the best to put on a token, but I guess they were out of options. So let's scry here. Don't need more ramp artifacts. Field of the Dead's nice. So let's see here. This can tap a creature down for 5 mana, so that's also something we have available. This is kind of the interesting part of the deck where we've got all these activated abilities that we have to juggle. Not opposed to tapping down the token so they can't transform Journey. And then if I send both creatures, they have to trade for my Palladium Mirror. And next turn I can start making zombie tokens. And then make sure to put a stop on upkeep so I can maybe find a way to untap Traxos. Opponent plays Muldrotha, they're at 1. And then just gotta find some way to untap Traxos here and we should be fine. Well, that does it. <laughs> does a little bit more than just uh, untapping Traxos, I would say. And my opponent explodes. One of the reasons I didn't play Ugin the Spirit Dragon as my commander is that it's not the most fun to play against, so... That's why I ended up choosing Ugin the Ineffable instead. But of course, we're still going to play Ugin in our deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're up against Vivian Argbo Ranger. So green beatdown deck. We've got a fine hands. Couple ramp artifacts. And Voltaic Servants. Can be a good early blocker too. You might be wondering what creatures we have that synergize with Animal Sanctuary. One that comes to mind is Stone Cold Serpent, not sure if I've got another one. I guess I could technically use the Transmogrifying Wand on my own creature and then we'll have an Ox. I could attack for one, I guess so. Don't think there's any creature that can really ambush my servant if I attack there. Ready 
Garrick makes a beast. So, we can go Lotus into Skyclave Relic. Untap Lotus, although it's not like I can do anything with it. Garruk pumps the beast. So next run I have to decide if I want to play Ugin. Might even be able to play Ugin and Meteor Golem here. Let's see, six mana for Ugin. One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess I'm one mana short of playing Golem afterwards. I guess I don't mind Golem and then kill Garruk. That was a short hunt. And then next turn I can maybe use Ugin to kill a creature and then pressure Vivian. Alright, Gem Razor gonna blow up one of my artifacts here, sadly. But that does mean Vivian's exposed. We're fit enough to survive. So we'll take care of Vivian. And Ugin can kill Gem Racer, and hopefully they don't have a hasty questing beast here. Already have the city's blessing, so Arch can start drawing cards too. Ooh, Forsaken Monument. That's pretty nice. The fabric of the multiverse obeyed. All right, let's get in for five. And I would be pretty happy if my spirit token dies somehow. And Golem's fine. Play Karn. I battled with the forces of good. Allow me. Should probably draw first with my arch. Alright. So no great attacks this turn. Suppose I can also sack a relic. Alright, couple lands. But that's where having all these activated abilities in our mana is nice. Kogla, pretty good against our deck. It's gonna fight my meter golem. Goose makes it so I can minus Ugin on Kogla. A foolish move. 
So do I want to keep minusing Karn? Probably. Although I guess Karn would die to the goose then. Alright, fine, we'll plus. Get a lantern. Secrets manifest before you. All right, we're flooding out a little bit here. But that's okay. Still in decent shape. And if uh, the spirit token ever dies, we get access to Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Kogla's gonna stay back. A Ratchet Bomb. Huh. Well, a Ratchet Bomb can kill all my tokens, which means we also get access to Ugin. So that could actually be the play. Is there something else I want to do here? No, that seems fine. Wouldn't be able to get rid of the Great Henge with the ability here. Silence. Let's see. I guess I want to... Minus Karn now. Could destroy the Great Henge, to be honest. Just draw with Tome. Alright, and a uh, two mana construct, why not? Two, so I can play this for four. Opponent had Heroic Intervention, but sadly that doesn't really work against Ugin the Spirit Dragon's minus ability. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Ghoul Caller. It's an interesting commander. Uh, don't love this hand since we only have the one ramp card. Let's take a free mulligan. This is better. And what do we want to choose here? I 
I guess we'll go with crab. Turn for monument coming up. Opponent with a nice zombie tribal deck here. Monument's not a very fair card. That's uh, turn 5 Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Torbran. So let's see how our deck can handle Monorad. This hand's probably not gonna cut it. It's kind of close. If we draw a third land, it's not so bad, because we can use Treasure Map to keep hitting our land drops. But Immortal Sun is not really where I want to be. Ratchet Bomb's gonna be slow. Let's take a free mulligan. This is better. Ooh, Mindstone was a great draw. Sets up turn three Farmine Vessel. If we can find a blast soon, that's also going to be a nice uh, land in this matchup. And Banneret's going to mentor onto Firebrands or Red Camp. So, could play Ugin, make a token, still play an extra artifact. Don't hate it. Or we can keep Ugin to kill Torbrain, and this turn play Familiar and Karn and make a token. Familiar gets stomped. So no tour brands this turn at least. So we'll block the weasel back and then they can pump Banneret to kill Karn. Play Ugin. Alright. Could also use Karn's Bastion to proliferate onto Ugin to kill Torbran, 
but it's funnier to turn into an ox. And then... I can maybe use spinning wheel to tap a creature down here. Can use buried rune to get back artifacts. Got some options. Token down. And Pyromancer finishes off Ugin. Ooh, Field of the Dead. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Heliot, Suncrown, so an aggressive wildlife gain deck. Yeah, could be problematic, although we do have Monument into the potential Ulamog again, so I'll try it. And then Tome just needs to find lands. Jani's Pride Mate's gonna grow pretty quickly. So let's see what we can find. Relic is fine, a 3 mana ramp card. Lets me play turn 4 monuments. And then hopefully... Turn 5 Ulamog. So I might still be dead here. The funny thing is Heliod's no longer creature once Aldanto transforms, but they can probably add some devotion next turn. So yeah, we're already down to 12. Healer's Hawk turns on Heliod's. Yeah, this was pretty much a perfect draw from the life gain deck. Maybe if we were on the play we had a chance. Can gain two with Fountain. So if I play Monument, I'm just dead on board. If I play Construct, I can jump, and then I'm still probably dead on board. Oh well. I think my opponent's got me. GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing the Scarab God. And we've got a fine opening hands. Just gotta find one more land at some points. So we can play a turn for Ludus. Plenty of ramp. Well, Thoughtseize might punch a hole in our game plan here. 
Also, if they take Mana Geode, we've got plenty of replacements. Decides to take Truxos instead. I guess they just want to reanimate it with Scarab God at some point. We'll use a Scry to find more lands. Oof, Monument is tempting. Yeah, I don't think I can give up on Monument here. Opponent might be playing some counter spells too here, we'll see. Yeah, they're definitely holding on to some counter magic. That's fine. I'll hold on to Monument for now then. Just go Lotus into Karn. They'll probably counter Karn. So let's play Monument first, using these trinkets for mana. Well, our opponent is running us out of cards. Still have our commander we can play. So this is Scarab God, probably with Counterspell Backup for Ugin. Three, six... So you can play this Kicked. Which will also enable the City's Blessing. That worked out. So now we have Ugin. Can start drawing with Arch. I wonder if you're brave enough to overcome your fears. Alright, scary Ashok. Ooh, statue is nice. And then I probably want to hold land so they can't minus Ashok and make me discard whatever they bounce. Although I guess Gaves can also draw it in some speed, so could have still played it. You will feel inspired.
Conan goes digging. All right. That baits out in the gates. I will be Satan elsewhere. Nice Ugin. Probably no real reason to activate Arch there since there's not many cards I care about casting for three mana with the Ugin discount. In case they have more discard effects. So I guess we'll start by casting Ugin. See if that resolves. It does. Well, minus five. Can still use Buried Ruin to get an artifact back. Um, I guess Statue could be pretty nice here. Do I have the mana to cast it at this point? I think I'll be a little bit short. We'll get it end of turn. I'm gonna need something like Perilous Vault to exile all my stuff. Agent of Treachery, gonna steal one of my Planeswalkers. Although my Ugins don't like beating up on Colorless Permanents, so they're not gonna be super effective against each other. Steals Ugin a Spirit Dragon. Yeah, I mean, I could also go for the Immortal Sun here. I've got a lot of solid options. Forsake a Monument to pump the team. Kind of like that idea as well. Sure. And then we'll start by casting it. Can start leveling a blast soon. Although I'll probably go after. Her. I guess I can just go face. Opponent has to chump. That's fine. Yeah, Arch of Roska definitely putting in some work here. Lundi Vision. Opponent needs to find a sweeper effect here. They find a Seagate Restoration instead. And they explode. Alright, sweet. So Ugin defeats the Scarab God after battling through a bunch of counter spells and disruption. So yeah, overall, Ugin Brawl, pretty fun deck. And then I quickly want to bring up one card I forgot to mention in the introduction that should definitely be in the deck as a 2-mana Guardian Idol as another ramp artifact that joins Mindstone as the only 2-mana ramp options for these colorless decks since we sadly don't have access to Arcane Signet, which doesn't work with a colorless commander. So yeah, I think that's going to wrap things up for today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.